The Orton effect has long been known as a trick that photographers use in post-processing to add a little bit of glow to their images. Previously, this was only available to do in Photoshop because it required you to stack multiple photo layers together, uh, lower the opacity, and then do a little bit of a blur to create this glowing effect. However, now that Lightroom has some more advanced masking tools, there is some capabilities to add some glow to your images via Lightroom. My name is Austin James Jackson, I'm a professional landscape photographer based in the beautiful southern Utah. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what I've been working on the last few months, dialing in my Orton effect or glow in Lightroom Classic. Now, if you don't know how to use the masking tools, this video should cover enough information to teach you a little bit. But if you do want to dive deeper into masking, I'll link another video here where I cover some masking tools in Lightroom Classic. I would highly recommend checking it out. These masking tools are excellent ways to improve your images. Now, as I show you how to do this concept, I'm also going to show you how to create a preset. So you can simply just click that preset on every photo you want to apply this to. So then you can simply and easily apply the Orton effect to your photos. So let's go ahead and jump right into Lightroom Classic. Now, the first photo we're going to be working on is this one here. And you can see that we've got this nice sunset, but we just want a little bit more glow in the image. So I'm going to open my masking tool. Make sure you're in the develop module here. You should have access to your masking tool right here. You're going to select this now just ignore these other masks here these are just things that i've done in the edit you can see this photo is already partially edited um, these have nothing to do with the effect that we're about to apply if you're doing this on a photo where you haven't used masking you will have none of these you'll just have a masking box here with the option to create a new mask so you'll create a new mask now the way that i like to do this is via radial gradient so i click radial gradient then i'm going to click and drag and you can click on the center of your image if you want or on the edge like that. I just want it to be nice and big. Now, that might be too big, but we can adjust it later on. So we'll just leave it for now. And you also want the feather to be 100. So make sure your feather is at 100. Your circle should look like this. You don't want it to look like that. Make sure your circle looks like this. Feather 100. Now, what you're going to do here is you're going to increase the exposure just a touch and these are the effects that's going to be applying the Orton and you can drag this around to the bright spot on the image you can see right here for me um, is kind of that bright spot so it looks good now I'm also going to go down um, I think I'm going to drop the highlights just a touch and then I'm going to increase the whites now if you want to copy the numbers that I'm using you can otherwise you can do it on your own but we are going to make a preset after this so I'm going to uh, reutilize these numbers again and again now, I also like to warm it up just a touch to give me some warm light. Let's go about 10 points. You can see that just warms up the light a little bit. Now I will also go down and I'm going to reduce our dehaze about five points. I'm going to reduce the clarity about 30 points and reduce the texture about 15 points. Now we're starting to look pretty good. We can toggle this mask. You can see it's adding a nice little bit of glow. Now if you wanted to increase the exposure just a little bit more, you could just make it a little bit brighter. And you can drop those highlights just a touch if you want to preserve the brightest spots. So that's looking pretty good. Now as you can see, you could really adjust these numbers however you want. Um, this is just how I am doing it myself, but you can do it however you'd like. Now the key here is that right now we're just creating a big circle in the center of the frame so we're brightening the rock as well um, and anything else that may be dark in your image. And we want to prevent doing that. That's where these masking tools really come in handy because we can do subtract which is going to subtract something else from this mask. So we're going to subtract uh, luminance range and I'm just going to select the rock. Now what that's going to do is select the rock from my selection and anything else that is dark like that rock. So when I hover over it, now you can see this is our selection. And if we wanted to click on our radial gradient, we can move it around and it will adjust our selection. So now you can see this is what is getting the Orton effect applied to it. Now we can toggle this just like that. If you're finding the effect coming on too strong, you can simply go down to right here where it says amount and you can lower the opacity. We're going to leave it at 100 for now though. But you can see that's how I'd apply the Orton effect to this image. Now let me show you how you can save this as a preset. You're going to open up your box over here on the left, uh, drop down into the presets menu, click the plus button, create preset. 
now check none and then check on the mask now this was mask four as you can see yours will probably just be called mask one select that and then i'm just going to call this orton effect just like that hit create now let's move on to the next image and i'll show you how that works so we've got another image. This one isn't really a big sky sunset, but it is one that I would still like to apply the Orton effect to. You can see there's already a lot of glow, but let's see if we can add a little bit more. So I go into my presets and I click on Orton effect. Now let's close this down over here, make our image a little bit bigger and click on this. You can see the Orton effect is not looking that great. Now part of the problem is our radial gradient is right here in the center of the image. And in this image, the light's coming from the top. I almost want the light to be bleeding in like that. Now I could use a linear gradient or I can just select this radial gradient, bring it up here, and then bring this down a little bit more so it bleeds out a little bit further. Somewhere like that. Now if I want to make the circle even bigger to feather it all the way to the edges, somewhere like that. Now I can come back in here, I can toggle this. We have over this, you can see that it's not selecting some of the stuff on the bottom, some of this darker stuff, which is great. And you can, you're gonna need to go into most photos and make some adjustments. So if you're finding it's too bright, you know, drop the exposure. If you're finding it's adding too much warmth, you can get rid of that uh, warmth portion. You can reduce the saturation if it's adding too much, or you can increase the saturation if it's re reducing the saturation already, which a lot of times it will be when you're brightening. Um, and you can just go through and punch and play with these settings. You can see that's the effect that we've applied there. We've added some really nice glow to the image there. Now let's go one more example here. I've got this photo here. We're going to go back into our presets, hit that Orton effect, and then we will toggle this. Now you're going to see on this image, it's almost making my image look a little bit crunchy. It's like making this a little darker up here. So we're going to go in there and we are going to take a look at that. Now again, on this one, we don't want that brightness right in the middle. Instead, we want to go up a little bit higher with it. So I'm going to just grab the radial gradient and bring it a little bit higher in the sky. And I may even increase the size. Now it might look like this is way too big, but remember because it's feathered, as soon as we start heading away from the middle, the effect gets less strong. So by the time we're all the way over here, the effect is not very strong at all. Now, I just want to go through, I might just increase that exposure, maybe bring back the highlights a little bit, just enough. Zoom in there for you so you can see a little better. Maybe I'll actually drop the whites there. And yeah, you can see that that's starting to look pretty good. Now, you can also go through, if you're seeing certain spots that you don't like here, so I wanted to show this photo as an example. So I can toggle this. You can see I don't like really what it's doing to some of this stuff in the foreground. So I can go through and subtract. And you can subtract with a variety of different things. I'm just going to show you using a brush because it's pretty easy. I would recommend turning the flow of the brush down a little bit so you can kind of click a few times. And then you're just clicking through here and subtracting this from our selection. That's working in a little bit slow, so I want to just increase the flow to make it happen a little bit faster for you here. Now I can toggle this. You can see how we are getting rid of some of that. I'm going to increase this even further. There we go, just like that. So now you can see it's not affecting that area quite as much anymore. So you may have to do that from time to time. Go in there and paint with a brush and kind of get rid of that effect in certain spots that you might not want it. Again, you can do this by selecting an object. Um, you know, select people, background, sky, subject. You can do objects, brush, either the gradients or color range or luminance mask to subtract. But I wanted to show you how you can kind of play together um, to remove certain areas if you're not liking what that effect is doing. But you can see how that gives my sky a nice, really soft glow. Um, additionally, I would recommend, you know, a lot of times when you warm the glow up, I want that glow to be warm, but you might need to go back into your photo and reduce the temperature of the overall image just a touch just like that. So um, don't feel like this needs to be the very end of your edit. Uh, feel like you can apply this and then go back and make other adjustments as you see fit. It's not necessarily a linear process. A lot of times in your photo editing, you're going to be working in circles and, you know, do one thing, move back to another, and bounce back and forth. So hopefully that helps you and shows you how to really easily create the Orton effect in Lightroom Classic.
All right, guys. Well, like I mentioned, I've been working on that for a while, trying to dial in exactly how to do it and make it look really nice, get that really nice glow like the Orton effect. Hopefully that helps. Now, I do still think that in Photoshop, you have a little bit more customization options and you get a little bit better results when you apply the Orton effect. But I also understand that a lot of you guys out there don't understand how to use Photoshop. You don't want to learn. You feel like it's too difficult. So for that reason, you stick in Lightroom Classic. So this gives you a really nice alternative to create that Orton effect. Now, if you guys have done something similar to this and gotten great results, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments. Love to hear what you do. Or if you use this effect on your own photos and you find it to be successful or find a small tweak that makes it even better, please also feel free to let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. As always, thank you so incredibly much for being here. I appreciate your support. Help me to continue to do this. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'm posting weekly videos to help you guys become better photographers. Otherwise, my name is Austin James Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much.